Today's webinar, uh, we're pleased to be sponsored by the Georgia Manufacturing Association. We've partnered with GMA to offer inexpensive professional development opportunities for the manufacturing industry abroad, and especially here in the state of Georgia. To learn more about all the plant tours, networking opportunities, and other services that the GMA offers to manufacturers, please visit their website or give GMA's CEO, Jason Moss, a call. Finally, let's tackle our ground rules today. First, all attendees will be on mute as we're looking to optimize the audio experience. With that said, let's make it as interactive as possible. So please do submit your questions via the chat toolbar or the raise your hand button. Please note that you'll need to be connected via microphone to the webinar if you use the latter option. Finally, a PDF of today's presentation and the recording will be sent out to each registrant after today's session. Now, let's share a little more information about our featured presenter here today. Mark Preston is founder and CEO of Lean Applications. He also serves as a member of our executive advisory board here at TalentStream. Mark has been driving change in manufacturing and sales environments for over 25 years, primarily using Lean. He's held leadership positions in companies such as TDK Electronics, Respironics, which is now Philips Healthcare, and Acuity Brands Lighting. At Acuity Brands, Mark led the deployment of Lean across the, the Acuity supply chain, which included 16 plants and five distribution centers. He also rolled out 14 supplier development programs, which helped to optimize supplier performance as well. Currently, Mark is a Lean champion with the Association for Manufacturing Excellence, also known as AME, and he served as a keynote speaker for organizations across the country, including Apex, CSCMP, Modex, just to name a few. All in all, Mark has a passion for teaching and sharing best practices with others. And with all that said, here's Mark Preston. Uh, good afternoon. Um, first, uh, a few starter points I'm excited to uh, share with you. Uh, my main goal is to give you a couple of good ideas that you can implement in your facilities and really help engage the employees. I am uh, working at a plant today, so if you hear some noises in the background, I apologize up front, uh, but I'm actually working in uh, Huntsville, um, so that's what you'll hear if you hear any, uh, any noises that's going on today. Uh, this webinar will be recorded and also the link will be provided in the AME Knowledge Center as well as other places um, and Scott and you'll actually as part of this get, a, get, get the link as well as a PDF of this presentation. I love uh, working with uh, companies on Lean but a lot of times I'll go to a company and you can definitely tell when you walk in that there is no the engagement is very little if any uh, just by the people's faces as they look at you with frowns on their faces or um, the comments that they make those kind of things you can definitely tell the level of engagement just by walking through a plant. I decided lean sometimes has a bad stigma when people do lean the wrong way and use it as a head cutting uh, exercise. Lean is not that in my world and I don't I believe uh, people that manage others have the responsibility to make sure everybody has a job so I, I decided to change the acronym of lean to living engaged attitude now are you living it are you trying to be efficient are you trying to be productive in what you do at home and at work and and during your life are you engaged in what you're doing or are you just waiting and watching are you working for a paycheck? Or are you working for a paycheck and a career? Are you trying to get involved? Are you engaged? What's your attitude like? It's a direct reflection of how you're working. So is your attitude good? Is your attitude bad? So it really does depend on your attitude. Also, there's no better time to improve than now. So are you continuously improving? Are you always trying to think out of the box and think of how things can be better for your job and for the company? So living engaged attitude now is a, a good description of lean as we talk about how to get uh, associates engaged. Why employee engagement is so important. So. Uh, being in Alabama and having a lot of good Alabama friends, I will say that this picture was taken in Alabama, not Georgia. 
but just kidding. One of the things you can tell is why employee engagement is so important. Are they just doing it to get a paycheck or are they doing it for the right reasons to create a quality product, to create a career, to uplift the company in, in many, many ways. Some of the things that I saw in the last year, and I won't name names, but uh, there's some interesting things that you can see as you walk around plants to see how people are engaged. I come across this letter, uh, this actually um, printout that was posted on a machine. Thank you for your assistance and cooperation in helping us have a clean and pleasant work environment. And it's so dirty that you can hardly tell what it says. I also see that we've chained the uh, compressed gas except for one container. And that container is ready to fall and go through a wall potentially. Uh, fire extinguishers are not hangers. Uh, this MSDS cabinet sat there for three months and so people just started putting the uh, chemicals on top of the cabinet. So you can definitely tell engagement. The funny one was we found the suggestion box behind the Dr. Pepper machine. The last suggestion in the box was to get a Dr. Pepper machine. And that was true. <laughs> so you never know what you're going to come across, but definitely you can tell if uh, companies are engaged, if their people are engaged, or are they just doing what they're told? Are they just doing it for a paycheck? When I look at the lean principles, I circle these two. Definitely number one is the most important lean principle specify value through the eyes of the customer. And when you think about customers, think about you have internal customers, your manager, uh, other people that you uh, produce things for, like reports and things. But also you have the external customer and how do they see things? As they walk through your plant, are you seeing things through the eyes of a customer? And the second one is identify the value streams, identify and eliminate waste, make value flow at the pull and demand of the customer. I think pull is overlooked in many places. It's all about creating a pull in your supply chain, making sure each link pulls the next link and does not push the next link, uh, just like in a chain. Create or enhance process flexibility. You can tell this in engagement as well. If people are cross-trained and want to be cross-trained, it shows a level of engagement. They want to be more productive for the company. They want to be better for the company. They want to be better for themselves. So you can definitely see in flexibility uh, in a cross-training chart or how many people are cross-trained in your company, it shows a level of engagement. Common sense and business sense prevail. You always want to think, think common sense about things. And number seven, I circle, which we're talking about today, involve associates, cross-representation. Are you doing it to them or are you doing it with them? That's the, the key question you have to ask. Are you setting things up and telling people to do it? Are you engaging these people to help develop these processes, to help develop these templates and forms and things like that in your company? So you have to involve associates. You have to really make sure that, you know, sometimes their ideas usually are better than our ideas. So we really have to get that engagement going. Create a visual management system. Communication is a form of engagement, and there's no better form of communication than visual management. Do not reward overcoming, drive root cause elimination. Are we putting band-aids on things? That shows a level of engagement. Are we just getting by, or are we fixing the root cause of the problem? Continuously improve in pursuit of perfection. Always trying every day to make it a little bit better than you left it. So than when you came in in the morning. So are you doing a little bit so that every day you continuously improve? Some of the improvements might be over a week or over a month, but every day you can do something to make it a little bit better. And don't fool yourself. Really think about things in a, in a common sense approach and make sure uh, that you're doing it for the right reasons. Competition feeds on our waste. Our goal, the relentless pursuit and elimination of waste. So waste is the gate waste, which we'll talk about briefly. So this webinar is basically going to cover just a little bit of intro. Then I'm going to talk about 
how to engage employees on the floor, how to engage employees in the office. We're going to talk about how to engage with visual management and also how to engage with leadership like gimbal walks. And then at the end of this work webinar, we're going to talk about manpower motivators, which I have a list of many manpower motivators which continues to expand. But how are you motivating your employees? So our goal is the relentless pursuit and elimination of waste. You feed on your competition's waste just like they feed on yours. If you can't deliver it on time, I can deliver it on time. If you have bad quality, I have good quality. Sales feeds on their competition's waste just like your competition feeds on your waste. So it's not about eliminating people, it's about eliminating waste. It's all about how you can be more efficient. The way I put this together, and I know this has been on a couple of my presentations, several of my presentations, but I always like to, to think in the right terms as we talk about this. It's all about eliminate, eliminating waste, engaging people, so you have a culture of continuous improvement. Defects. So downtime spells out the eight waste, and it's an easy acronym to remember. But in defects, you know, what I look for is a visual separation of good product and bad product. Is good product in a, a gray bin and bad product in a gray bin? Or is it in a red bin? Is it clearly labeled? Is it clearly um, separated? Also in the office, anything that starts with re is a defect. Redo, rewrite, requote, um, rework. Any of those things are a defect. Why are we having to do it again? Why can't we get it right the first time? The next is overproduction, processing more than needed before it's needed or faster than it's needed. Why are you producing more? You're spending more labor costs, you're spending more material costs, you're spending more overhead costs, and you're building number six waste, which is inventory, which is another waste. So are you producing more than needed? And it's definitely taking more money out of your pocket to do that kind of thing. Overproduction in the office can also be seen as producing more than, than needed. If I do a 20-page report for my manager once a month, do you think he really looks at 20 pages? Or can you sit down and say, what's the value in this, this report? Can I put a one-page dashboard together and save us both a lot of time? So that's an example of overproduction. Can we, can we get what's needed and eliminate the waste around it? Wait time, you know, time that you're waiting on approvals in the office, time that you're waiting for something to take place. I always use the example of we always we all wash clothes. So do you put your clothes in the washing machine and wait for them to finish? No, you always go do something else. But many times in a plant or in a factory, we, we put things in a machine and we stand there and watch it do its operation. Can we be more efficient with our time? Are we waiting or can we run three or four machines and it all be synchronized so that everything gets done efficiently? Non-utilized people, failing to utilize people's full mental creative problem solving abilities. So most people have to do taxes. So if you're able to do the taxes that we do, you're able to do many, many things. Don't take it for granted that people cannot do things they have a lot of talent and a lot of skills, especially the people that do it every day. So we have to utilize their skills and their talents. Hey, Mark. And so how are they? Yes. We, we have got a question from uh, Hamodi. I'm going to recognize Hamodi real quick. Hey, Hamodi, can you hear us? Hamodi? Okay. Maybe we, we might have had a bad connection. Okay, Mark, my apologies. Yeah. But um, no problem. What I would like to do, unless it's a technical problem, please hold your questions because i got a lot of things to cover. Hopefully I'll cover some of those things in, in the presentation that I give. But, um, and if, if you have some technical problems, um, please put it on the chat and uh, we'll, we'll definitely try to take care of them at the end or, or sometime, so no problem at all. Uh, transportation, movement of parts, materials, making sure things flow through at the most efficient manner and, and the shortest, you know, the quickest way from one point to the next is a straight line. 
How are your parts moving through your plant? How are you your people moving? Inventories. Inventories also are, are a waste. I see them as milk. If you were producing milk, how bad would your plant smell right now instead of producing the metal parts you're producing or whatever you're producing? How, how can you make those things flow through and turn? And also inventory is, is seen as money sitting on a shelf or the Geico money guy that sits on a shelf. You basically have a lot of money that's just tied up and it could be in your pocket using it for other things. Motion waste. People moving elbows. I always look for elbows when I walk through a facility. How far are you reaching for things that you need? Can you make things very close uh, where you need them and not have to walk over to get a tool or walk over to get a part every time you need it? Think about motion waste in the plant like that. Motion waste in the office could be how many times do you have to click to get to where you need to be in the computer system? Um, can you hyperlink things? Can you make it more efficient and easier for less motion? And then extra processing, really putting more into the product than the customer really needs. So I always think about my PowerPoint presenter. There's always a couple of buttons I never use and I'd rather pay $10 less and get what I need instead of having to pay extra for these extra bells and whistles that I never use. So extra processing. Extra processing can also be um, putting in a quality step that you fix the root cause and you're still doing that 100% inspection for two years. Why are you doing it? Think about it. Ask, ask the question why. So those are the eight ways. I did go over them fairly quickly, but I do always like to set the tone and think about the eight waste as we go through the different presentations. The first part of engagement and the first part of lean in my world is learning to see, seeing the hole in the details. And there's a lot of fun engaging ways to see the hole in the details. Um, the first one I'll briefly talk about, there's an hour webinar on a rattlesnake hunt, but for those that you haven't been part of a my webinars or part of my training, I'll quickly just talk about a rattlesnake hunt. I found that a rattlesnake hunt is a great way to get everyone in your operation involved. A rattlesnake is something that bites you if you see it, bites you if you hear it, if you're around it long enough that'll bite you. It could be a quality issue that'll bite you later, it could be a 5S or organizational issue that could bite you, it could be a safety issue that could bite you something that would cause you a problem later. So that we define a rattlesnake as one of those things that's a waste in the plant or a safety issue, quality issue, or 5S issue. The simple, easy way to describe a rattlesnake hunt is it's a fun, engaging activity. People talk about, we're going to do a 5S program, and always their sentence goes down when they say that because they see a 5S program in terms of being an audit. And an audit is sometimes looked at, here comes the police, they're going to check check my area out, they're going to think how things are done. I turn this around to be a proactive approach and an engagement approach with rattlesnake hunting. And I do many, many rattlesnake hunts every year. This started nine years ago in Osram in Monterey, uh, Mexico. And that's a picture on the screen there of the one of the first rattlesnake hunts that we did. So the way it goes is a three-day event, and you have three to five employees per team with three teams in the room. Each team gets a conference room wall that they'll display their, the pictures that they take. So we do about an hour worth of training, and then everybody, each team has a camera, a little whiteboard and rattlesnake tags. They go out, they look for things in the area that they've been assigned. They take pictures of the rattlesnakes, like a cord on the floor that you're going to trip on, or a cover that's not in place, or an OSHA violation like a chemical bottle that's not labeled. And they take that picture with the whiteboard so the numbering can be consistent. Then you 
print the pictures and put the pictures on the wall like you see in that picture and then you put half of the tag. Half of the tag goes on the rattlesnake and half of the tag goes on the wall. So at the end of day one we're just tagging rattlesnakes in day one. End of day one I usually have I'm averaging a hundred pictures per wall so if you have three teams we'll have about 300 pictures on the wall and from that um, we'll label them is it a safety issue, is it a quality issue, is it a 5S issue or is it one of the eight wastes. At the end of the day I'll probably get the plant manager, we'll judge the biggest rattlesnake, the most rattlesnakes, the biggest safety rattlesnakes, the biggest quality rattlesnake and with that we end up um, giving go to the dollar store and get some prizes just to make it fun and competitive. The next two days the teams go out and they actually um, kill the rattlesnake which means fix the problem, take the after picture of it being fixed and put the after picture up on the wall. If the teams get 80 percent kills of the hundred they get 80 of everything fixed then they'll get lunch of their choice the next week um, so it makes it a little competitive and what you do in three days you found 300 problems you learn to see as well as you're fixing 80 percent of those problems so it becomes a really fun activity uh, the next time if you do this once a month um, once or twice a month Neptune in Tallahassee Alabama has actually done it doing it twice a month they killed over 4,000 rattlesnakes and fixed a lot of great safety issues, a lot of quality issues, a lot of a lot of 5S issues and it really is it puts uh, learning to see on steroids is the way I would explain it. But it's a very good engaging activity uh, to really help people learn to see and some of the plants I work in small companies as well as larger companies and you know in smaller companies it might be two person teams with two teams or three person teams with two teams but I really like three to five people on a team with three teams and it really gets everybody involved in learning to see waste. One of some of the slides that we go over is you know you gotta look when you're walking through a rattlesnake hunt and think about how would the customer see this plant if they came in and, and think about the first impression areas. The first impression area is always where the customer first drives up is the parking lot. Does the parking lot have cigarette butts everywhere? That's a, that's a sign of engagement. That's a sign of how things are running at that plant. Uh, is the grass cut? Are the lights working in, in the building? Does it look like a place you want to enter uh, as a world-class manufacturing facility? That's the first impression. The next first impression is always the lobby. Can you tell if it's a dentist office when you walk in the lobby or can you see that it's a manufacturing plant when you walk in the lobby? So you always want to think about, you know, can I see what's being produced here? Is there a display of what they produce? Is there a uh, some awards that are recent, not from 10 years ago, but that are recent? Uh, do they have a picture of all the employees of the plant? Are they proud of their people? You can see that in when you're walking into a uh, a facility like that. And then you go I always say the first three steps into the plant is a big first impression. So next time you go into your operation I want you to take three steps into the plant and stop and look around and see can you say wow or can you say we need to work on this because that's the first impression that a customer gets is those first three steps. And you can tell engagement if things look like they are duct taped together or if they are used cardboard instead of something that's world class. But anyway, this is the kind of things that we train on when we do a rattlesnake hunt. And so a rattlesnake hunt is really where I want to go with as the first the first uh, engagement tool that I really have had a lot of success with. The next thing I'd like to ask you is do you have a non-negotiable list in your plant? A non-negotiable is a great term. It's what we expect to not have in our plant. No long-term handwritten signs. No outdated torn non-laminated signs. So you think about that. 
if you write up the sign and, and it's handwritten and you throw it up without laminating and it starts curling up and looking bad in a week, is that world class? I don't think so. Can you not type it up and laminate it before you put it up there? Um, no unpainted wood or steel, cables tied, um, 5S to-do list to company, 5S audit sheets. All of these are different kinds of non-negotiables that we've come up with and, and they seem to work in most plants that I go to. Eliminate cardboard wherever possible except for packaging of course but don't put a piece of cardboard on a bench and it's going to look terrible in about a week. Also don't get a box and write pencils on it and throw pencils in it. That's not world class. Can't we go get a, a plastic bin and label it anything that you know you're Use the eyes of the customer and really think about things before you do it. Color code consistency. What's your color code? How are the aisles marked? Um, how are things marked in front of the fire extinguishers? How is your non-conforming cages marked? So what does your color coding chart look like? The other one is no flat surfaces above six feet. Think about it in terms of if I were to have a, uh, a set of lockers, and they're flat on top and somebody puts a coffee cup on top of the lockers that coffee cup might stay up there for months but if you have an angle to the wall nothing can be placed up there then it, it prevents things from just getting stored in places they don't need to be stored in the other thing you want to think about is if a box is six feet up above your head you have no idea how heavy the box is it could be an ergonomic issue as well 5S implementation, um, sort, set in order, shine, standardize, and sustain. So if you're doing a 5S, I would suggest, and it's not getting the success that you wanted, change it up, do a rattlesnake hunt, and get people involved again. Or if you haven't started 5S, I would recommend doing the rattlesnake hunt once a month for a year and really get the low-hanging fruit up before you go audit and get zeros and, and depress everybody with your 5S audits. So it's a really good way to go into a 5S program is to do a rattlesnake hunt and it's a really good way to rejuvenate your 5S program is to do this at, if you're not getting the success you want. Engagement. We had the Black Toilet Seat Award for 5S and we had the Golden Flag Award for 5S. Everybody wanted to be the best in 5S for the month, the best audit for the month. They didn't mind getting the Golden Flag. But if you were the worst 5S, you really didn't want the black toilet seat in your area for a, a month. So it kind of was a fun way to uh, demonstrate that we really want people to get the Golden Flag instead of the black toilet seat because, you know, you're making an impression for the company. Here's some of the uh, ideas that we had on eliminating flat surfaces, um, making sure your cleanest cart, you, you know, I, I can't stand to see a broom laying on a half a million dollar piece of equipment. Let's make sure we have a, uh, you know, have our tools just like our, our brooms or tools, have them have a location and a place for everything, everything's in its place. Also remove doors. What happens if you have doors on cabinets? All the junk goes in there, nothing gets organized, it takes, you're frustrated that you can't find something, it's in a cabinet somewhere. So make sure, take the doors off. If you can't take the doors off, make them graded or see-through um, would be my recommendation. But usually doors on cabinets hide waste. So it's something to think about. Some of the other ideas, some of the folks have come up in rattlesnake hunts, Make sure in your toolboxes you have foam inserts so that everything has a place, everything's in its place. Also, we've used uh, magnetic floor sweepers, which you can purchase for about, I think it's $12 at Home Depot, and you can turn these magnetic floor sweepers into magnetic shadow boards, and uh, that seems to work pretty good. You can place the tools right where you need them when you need them. Everything's lined off. Everything's organized. It's it's a sign of you know how are people engaged. You know you kind of wonder in some areas do they really live like this at home or when they come to work they're just slobs. But 
Well, you really want to make sure people get the idea this is only for their benefit. It's going to reduce frustration. It's going to help them with their job. Quality products took the rattlesnake hunt to phase two. So they did rattlesnake hunts and killed over a thousand rattlesnakes in a very small uh, 40,000 square foot shop with uh, about 30 people. They killed over a thousand rattlesnakes. Then um, the plant manager did a program and they just started this to where they're taking rattlesnake pictures before and also people are implementing the ideas on their own, taking the after pictures and submitting these uh, suggestions that, well not suggestions, these implemented ideas to a steering committee. They're submitted anonymously. The steering committee judges them from one to five and then they post them in the lunchroom. Then once they're posted with a score, the people that submitted them write their name on the on the sheets. That way that they, you know, get credit for the ideas that they completed. So then at the end of six weeks, there's a thousand dollars in the pot and based on how many points you received, you would get a percentage of the thousand dollars. What he also did was if one person, everyone in the facility has to participate and at least have one implemented idea. If one person does not have an implemented idea, then the money does not get distributed. So it kind of really helps uh, with a little bit of pressure to try to get everybody on board in the whole facility to improving. The other thing is if they have over 300 points in the middle of the six, six weeks or any time during the six weeks they have over 300 points then they boost the dollar amount doubles to two thousand dollars in the pot which would get distributed. End of six weeks and I have ten, uh, ten points and there's a total of 100 points, then I would end up getting $100 out of that. So it's all easily calculated and broken down. Really it's given them a ton of uh, in great ideas and it's really incentivized people to really do more. And the more you do, the snowball continues to roll downhill and the, and the better it gets. So this was a phase two of the rattlesnake hunt that they did. Another engagement activity, on learning to see was the golden ticket, just like Willy Wonka's golden ticket. This was um, Vitamix was the first that I saw do this. They would hide golden tickets under a piece of trash and hide them in the plant. And the idea is pick it up, don't pass it up. So if you pick up trash and throw it away and you find a golden ticket, then you can turn it into your supervisor and I think you'll end up getting a a logo coffee cup with, with Vitamix or, or your logo on it. So it's just another way. I think Agora, we actually gave Willy Wonka videos uh, to the employees that, that Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory videos for those that turned in the golden tickets. But this is just another different way to change it up and help people get engaged and pick it up, don't pass it up, learning to see. After learning to see, visual is a key factor in engagement. Mick Wills is a good friend of mine and he says it best. People aren't afraid of change, they're afraid of uncertainty. And I believe that's true. So the better you can communicate of what's going on and what's going to happen in the future, the better um, things will go in your plant and the more engaged people will become. People aren't afraid of change, they're afraid of uncertainty. So we have to communicate effectively. At Surestia, one of the engagement activities that they did, they had a ping pong table. They put the entire facility, the scale, in Legos down to the people, the trash cans, the machines, everything was exactly to scale in the plant. This got people engaged. It basically, they, got, they formed teams. They came over and made sure everything was put in the places that they were put in. It was definitely a wow factor when you walk into SureSale and see the entire factory laid out the scale in Legos. Uh, the other thing it did is we put plexiglass on top of the Legos and 
put sticky notes on how to improve the different areas with every employee in the plant. So with those sticky notes, then we laid out the future state of how we wanted it to be arranged. Once we laid out the future state, they could see what the future was like and everybody had a part in that. So it really was a great activity to get people involved and help them determine the improvements that were made at SureSeal. Once we determined what improvements needed to be made, we actually had a 12-month calendar and each month we would we actually put a schedule on which Kaizen events we would have. This is a checklist for the Kaizen events that we needed to do in order to achieve our future state layout. So this was a good visual management tool to engage employees and show them when we would be working in their area, when we would be working on their particular um, ideas. Color coding is also a key to communication. So here you can see the outside aisles are blue, which is material and tooling. Um, the yellow is the processing of the equipment and the assembly of the parts. And then green is the high customer finished goods quality. So of course uh, yellow and blue make green and so it all tied together in a visual flow. Ownership is a key to engagement. We put pictures on lockers. Whose locker is this? Uh, we put pictures on racks. Who owns this rack? I have something that's going to fall into the highway. Um, who owns this rack? Making sure. I always go by the HR bulletin board if, and look for the Thanksgiving poster and it's August. It's because nobody owns the bulletin board or everybody owns the bulletin board. So who owns it? So if you put the HR manager's picture in the bottom right hand corner with their name, then it's always updated. Either they have ownership and pride in that board or you know who to go talk to if you have something that's not right. But ownership is as simple as sometimes putting pic, uh, people's pictures on things, hold them accountable for their ownership. This is at Neptune in Tallahassee. I really like this. This is almost like a library card checkout. So their quality test equipment, many different engineers would use this test equipment. So you had no idea when you went to get the test equipment where it was. So they had every employee's picture and badge uh, duplicated and put into a holder on the left side and so if you checked out um, this piece of equipment then you would slide your picture into place so anybody that walked over there could see exactly who has that piece of equipment. It cuts down on frustration and really does help uh, with communication. Seeing uh, if you didn't know how much scrap you had, do you really care? What's the level of engagement? So showing people how much scrap, either by use of ping pong balls during the month or by use of um, visuals like this lost scrap visual, it always helps engage employees in learning more and more about how they can contribute and engage in what you're doing. The plant KPI boards. This is a roll up from all the sales that rolls up. How is your plant doing? I always, when I walk through a plant, I ask people, did you have a good day yesterday? How, was the, how did everything run? Did you have good safety? Did you have good quality? Did you have good productivity? Did you have good del delivery? Did you make your delivery shipments? Here you can instantly see with a quick indicator how we're doing on safety, quality, delivery. Uh, who owns this metric and is going to update the trend chart, the Pareto chart, and the root cause countermeasure as a team. So visuals as far as a plant board, as far as a department area with whiteboard cubes like this really contributes to communication. As well as um, cell level. I'm actually in this plant on the bottom here, plasma processes today. I actually have their squid safety, quality, improvement, delivery, their goals. It's 1 to 31 inside. 1 to 31 are, are little boxes inside each letter. So each day you get a green X if you made your safety, if you didn't have any accidents, you made your quality goal. 
your improvement goal, your delivery goal. If you have a red, then it actually shows the uh, that you didn't make that. If you didn't make it, then you would actually put your root cause countermeasure steps next to it. So it's an easy visual, but it gets everybody on the same page and really helps people communicate and show them how to be engaged. Again, some more pictures of engagement. How's each cell doing? How, this is my workstation. Uh, so we use a lot of pictures when things like that. Cross training charts. Ownership. This is each person. This is each process or machine they can be trained on. The green dot is their train. The yellow dot is their in training. And the blue dot is their trainer. So if I'm this person, I, I want to train on these two jobs that I don't currently know. So how do you communicate that with the people on your floor? How do they know what they can train on and what they haven't trained on? One of the great examples I've seen at the Duha group up in Canada is each employee has a uh, passport, which on the passport is their picture. These are all underneath this board. And if you have so much training, you move from white to yellow to green to black to red. And it's based on the number of lunch and learns that you do and the number of training things that you do. Uh, the more skilled you are, the more valuable you are. And every leader out there should know that they're only as good as the people that work for them. So as a leader, I'm going to try to make my people and give them the opportunities to do the best thing that they can do. Monthly shipments. This is a ping pong ball. So how are you doing? Each $10,000 that's shipped out is a ping pong ball. So they shipped out $122,000, so they put 12 ping pong balls in here. So make visuals fun. Don't make them boring. Make them because if it's a boring plant, you have less engagement. You have to spice things up with new and creative ideas. HR in the office. This is a pipeline visual board. So if I need an employee, I put it in this slot. This is, it's uh, marketed internally. They put it, add in the paper externally. The next one would be first interview, second interview, third interview, drug test, uh, first week on onboarding, and then three month review. So you can see where all of your open positions are at any given time. You don't have to email somebody, you don't have to uh, call somebody and interrupt their day, but it creates a good pipeline visually of how you're doing. Other visuals could be color coding using, if it's green, that's great. When it gets to the red on the shelf, I need to reorder. Making things simple. It's always best to try to keep it simple. Make it sim simple always works 100% of the time. Bathfitters doing a great job with their visuals. Uh, they use the act they actually go and refurbish bathrooms, but they use the shower walls and created some nice morning meeting um, spaces for their production area, for their maintenance area, for each one of their gimbal walk spots where they would go in and see each department. So you can see that um, it's a great visual as well and it, and it really helps you with engagement. Another thing that I've seen is a MySpace. So each employee in SureSeal was given a picture frame, 8.5 by 11, and they were, we helped them put pictures of their family, of their hobbies, everything on those. So you had a wall that was called MySpace so that you could really see how other people, you know, what they enjoy, what they value. And that was a pretty good way to get engagement. The other thing is um, if you portray customer va uh, your company's values, you can actually give people um, a write-up and they were doing a once a month drawing because people stayed over and helped and they portrayed different um, aspects of company values on this board. Wall of Fame. I always like seeing a Wall of Fame. If you walk into a plant and you have a whole wall showcasing who has had something to do with improvement at this facility, it's pretty powerful. And also I, I think most employees want their picture on the Wall of Fame because they've contributed to many things in that company to really help them improve. In this case, each star represents one implemented idea that this employee had put together. So do you have a wall of fame in your plant that you can showcase the improvements that 
employees have done. You can also do visual, uh, virtual uh, Trello. I use Trello quite a bit. I won't go into too much detail about that, but it's a great free portal for visual communication. If you have a sales team or if you have an off-site team, it's a great way to communicate in real time um, with a, just like you saw the HR board, this can be set up the same way with cards, with columns, and so you can drop and drag the cards and really showcase the visual pipeline. I use Trello for every one of my clients, so if they need a template, if they need a, a um, training deck, I can instantly give it to them through the portal of Trello, and it's, a, it's the best free tool. I've used it for over seven years now, and it's, it really works well. Leadership. Let's talk about how leadership and engagement work together. Gimba. Gimba is a word that means where the work is being done. Um, the real place that the work is, is really taking place, where the value is added. So if you walk into the shop floor, it's usually where the, is really what gimbal means. A lot of people go on gimbal walks. A lot of companies go on gimbal walks. And I've seen some companies, they discourage employees by making it out like a gimbal walk is an audit. A gimbal walk is more than, it's a coaching tool. It's how you walk and understand as a communication tool. It has so much more meaning than just going and criticizing or you know, getting on to folks for things that they've done. It's, it's a really great way to uplift people and to coach people as you do a gimbal walk. The three reels of gimbal thinking is the real place, the real thing, and the real facts. And we use Gimba thinking when we do problem solving. So if you have a defective part like the mouse that I'm holding, if it, you know, if you have a defect, it comes back and you're making these um, mice, uh, do you have the real thing? Do you have the defect? Go to where it's being made. See the real, the real place it's being made and gather the real facts the data that's collected. So look at those three reels when you're doing Gimbal. I really enjoyed seeing this in, in um, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, welcome to the Gimbal as you walk through the doors. That's where the value is being created. And because lean manufacturing is never really finished, this is their journey towards excellence. The other thing is a, is a Gimbal stop sign. Put a, put a um, stop sign on your first three steps as you walk out and you stop and you see look around it may be one of your stop points uh, for the gimbal walk. Coaching. How do you get engagement? A lot of people do performance reviews like they have to. A performance review is so much more than a have to. Uh, it should be an opportunity to coach people to understand their needs, to understand what they want. One of the great books I recommend that you read is The Dream Manager by Matthew Kelly. And it was an excellent, excellent book to describe these things. So do you have a coaching room? Can you coach your employees as a leader? The Manpower Motivator List. I'm going to go over some of these. Now, I have four or five pages like this, but we're going to only cover a few things that I just want to call out. But you will get this presentation, so I'm going to leave time for questions. But I want to go over a couple on each page. Do you have daily huddles? Do you have a lean newsletter? Agora Leather Products, Agora Edge in St. Petersburg, Florida, they have a monthly newsletter. And if you want some examples of those, we'll be glad to provide those. But these are several communication and visual ways to motivate employees. Safety Pays Bingo in Safety and Health is a lot of fun. I've used Safety Pays Bingo, two or three companies that I've been to. Everybody gets a bingo card. Everybody gets a number if you don't have an accident and you're actually trying to win the pot, really looking for opportunities. Yearly Company Health Recipe Book published. Flu Shots for Employees. Safety t-shirt competition. All of these things are manpower motivators. 
Uh, rattlesnake hunt, of course, career paths. Do you have career paths set up for your employees? A lot of times an associate might be leaning toward a technical career path or they may go towards a management career path. They may not want one, but at least do you have those the opportunity for them to grow in the company? Um, English second language, English uh, for speakers of other languages. So we had two classes down in St. Petersburg, Florida for English. And maybe people need their GED, lean certification. I offer lean certification and other recognition programs like that for associate development. One of the best things is to take some of your people to different trips to see other, other manufacturing sites. Have you gone to one of your vendors or suppliers facilities that you know is a very good world-class facility or one of your customers facilities? Every time you, you know, you only, it's only common sense if you've seen it once. So if you don't show people what good looks like, they'll never understand what good looks like. So don't just show them what bad looks like, show them what good looks like by taking them on tours. Other things, uh, Buck's program for uh, logo products or Breakfast with the President Roundtable. These are all really good uh, things that we've done to really motivate. You may want to take one of these things each month and really try to improve the motivation by the engagement and it becomes a really great place to work. That's which, where you want to go to. Um, other things I have if you have a Lean Jeopardy, a Lean Family Feud, who wants to be a millionaire, you can spin the wheel of waste and have people come back the next day with examples of waste that they talked about in the morning meetings. Um, even at Agora, they invited the mayor to tour the facility and highlighted it into the local paper uh, with people's pictures in it, and it was in their newsletter. Just for fun. Uh, quality products is Popcorn Fridays. Every Friday they have an old-fashioned popcorn machine that they crank up. Everybody gets popcorn. Um, Halloween costume contest. We do that every year at Agora and one of the companies I work. Uh, everybody dresses in green on St. Patrick's Day. Guess how many Hershey's Kisses in the, uh, and jelly beans. Um, so there's so many fun things that you can do. Crazy Tie Monday, Hawaiian shirt Friday, um, Christmas decorating contest. It just depends on, you know, do you want to make it a place people want to come to or do you want to make it a place where they just get a paycheck? The more you have your employees engaged, the better. We give roses to all the employee uh, on Mother's Day, the, the women get, get roses. On Father's Day, the men get candied uh, mustaches. So you can do a lot of fun things, um, and that's why I say this list never ends, but it's a good, a pretty good list. Other thing, yearly t-shirt design contest uh, for safety or for other things that you might want to do. Um, external activities, a lot of people will engage their employees with uh, different sports, bowling, tough mudder, uh, ropes courses, other things like that for external activities. Also, you can engage employees with good causes like everybody wear pink uh, for breast cancer awareness in October on Fridays. So I just wanted to share Angel Tree Habitat. Uh, these are some of the many different things that I was able to list. And again, you'll get this presentation and I, I challenge you. And also, if you have some other ideas that aren't on there, please uh, send them to me. I, I'm also very open to other ideas that you may have. Um, Pure Seal, Nick's crazy and he actually got some mannequins to say, don't step on the forks of the forklift or, or different safety things. How do you make it fun, engaging for your employees? Um, Team cost savings competition. They also bring in fresh fruits for 25 cents for an apple or whatever. So the local grocery store brings in fresh fruits. They also have a team, you can have a team excellence race. This was at Osram uh, in, in Mexico. I really like seeing every customer that visited, they would actually put their customer's picture up and showcase who has come to their plant. 
and we did a 5S at home competition. Take pictures of things you're doing at home related to 5S and we'll judge those as well. Medtronics in Jacksonville where they said uh, welcome to the Gimba has a hall of pride. Each one of their Kaizen events, they recognize their people's success, their longevity. Last is we have a bucks program so you can make up bucks for your company and so many bucks you get some uh, different prizes that you can turn bucks into uh, for rewards. I know that was a lot to take in, but I'm hoping that you got a couple of good ideas from that. And um, I'm also interested if you have other ideas as well. But you know, it's all about how you can show people you care about them as a leader. It's not they are not machines. They're not asked. They're they're your number one thing that's driving the plant. You can't run the equipment without people. And if they have a bad attitude, you will not be efficient. So how can you engage your employees and create a culture where people want to come to work, they want to improve, and it's all about, you know, leadership has to be the person that instigates uh, that type of thing. Scott, did you want to mention some things here? Yeah, actually, uh, we've got a couple questions, Mark. Uh, so okay. before we move into wrap up, we want to pose a couple of questions to you, uh, to our audience. Uh, I've got All about right. 256, so we'll take just a few minutes here to take a couple questions. If you have a question, please do submit it via the chat toolbar. Uh, Mark, first question comes from Juan. Uh, what about small businesses? Any suggestions for companies with less than five employees? Um, there's several ideas on that on the Manpower Motivators. But even if you have less than five employees, you can do a continual rattlesnake hunt where you, you know, you have a, a one designated wall where people can put up rattlesnakes and then kill them during the week. You have to I understand where you're coming from because I do work with companies that have five people, that have ten people, and then companies that have hundreds. It's a lot easier to do a rattlesnake hunt with when you have more resources, but you can still do a rattlesnake hunt with just a few people and just carry it on for for a couple of weeks instead of just three days and have each person bring in rattlesnakes that they find and make that the competition individually. Um, the other things that, you know, on the manpower motivator list, there's several different ideas there. It doesn't matter how big your company is uh, to really showcase how you care about the people that are in that company. One of the things when uh, when I was hired at Acuity, I'll give props. Um, the person that was hiring me um, actually sent roses to my wife when I um, when I accepted the job offer. You know, doing something and recognizing people's families is a huge thing to do, whether it's a small company or a large company. I, I would send a birthday card to the people that work for me at TDK. Every time it was their birthday, I will make sure I had a birthday card going out for them and recognizing them on their special day. So little things can add up to major things and major differences in why people would want to work for us, for that company or a different company. Great, great question, Juan. Thank you for submitting it. Uh, Mark, next question comes from Cigar. Out of everything you shared, what is the most important thing to consider for employees? Um, the most important thing to consider is where they're coming from. Are they seeing things to really get on their page? I think the roundtables that you can have like a breakfast away from the plant with your employees or getting to know that where they're coming from is so critical in order to even have them become engaged. You can do a lot of things and they still may not be engaged, but if you can get on and understand where they're coming from, it really help you connect with those people and, and then things will really start happening. Of course, learning to see is the first step learning to see waste, learning to see problems that are all around me, but even before that you need to to um, start cracking the hard 
shells in between you and the people, and it may have been because of history that that's in the company. So how do you? It's sometimes it's very difficult to change that those uh, hard shells that are around people, but you can do it, and it it, it starts by doing something different than what you've always done. Great, great question, uh, Cigar. Thank you for submitting. Uh, Mark, next question comes from Tony. Do you think to enhance the organizational vision is helping employees to engaging on the work? I would ask if they had any input into the into the uh, vision. Um, and what I mean by that, yeah, I understand that strategy starts from the executive team and goes down throughout the organization. But are, how are you connecting from the executive team's vision all the way down through the organization? I don't think you can stop connecting. You, you have to go and talk to the people and, and get where they are in the company because that might change the vision because they're not ready to take on something. But definitely that communication of the vision is a key factor in how that relates to the metrics these people are documenting and rolling back up to that, that vision. Great. One phrase I've, I've heard here recently, Mark, is when you build the plan with the team, you get less uh, less resistance in implementing the plan from the team. Right. So uh, that's right. Great, great question, Tony, and appreciate your your perspective there, Mark. Uh, last question before we we wrap things up, uh, Mark. This comes from Amanda. Out of all the ideas you shared today, what would be the first thing you'd recommend folks do today to enhance their team's engagement? Mm, that's a good one. So today. If you haven't done, it depends on where you are on your journey, of course. But today, I think one of the key things that you can do is smile more than you frown. You can definitely change attitudes by asking people how they're doing, um, finding you, and you better know everybody's name that you talk to. So, if you've got a large company, one of the things I would do is try. I, I had. 400 people at one time, and I made sure I knew everybody's name, and I made sure that I uh, kind of knew what was going on in their family. Um, that is a key for engagement. I've been to, to funerals for, for associates that their husband passed away or other people passed away. What are you doing to connect with people in the real world instead of just acting like they're machines? So are you calling them out by name? Are you smiling at them? Are you only criticizing them, which would be a problem? Or are you also giving them some coaching, giving them some ideas, and giving them some um, thanks for all that they do? Terrific. Great answer there. And, and Mark, uh, the piggyback on the rattlesnake hunt, you know, one of the things we've seen – work really well in person is you get feedback from employees and the team acts to you know today same day to address these issues so uh, from a safety perspective you know a lot, of, a lot of times we get input from various employees on uh, safety hazards and whatnot in a plant would you also say something that leaders can do on the call today do it before they leave today is to fix that wire that's draped across the, the plant floor or to fix the faulty signage or you know from a safety perspective how important is it to, to knock those those things out yeah you're responsible once you see it and you know it always happens if, if you if you know about it usually so you want to make sure you take care of safety issues immediately uh, the rattlesnake hunts has been a big factor. I have insurance companies that want us to do rattlesnake hunts at companies to help their insurance rates. Uh, safety, the biggest safety issue was a, a chain link fence that was padlocked. It was the fire exit for the plant that I've seen. It can, you know, I've seen so many safety issues and they're usually the big rattlesnakes that have to be fixed immediately. But yeah, you're right. Get it done as quick as you can. Terrific. 
All right. Well, thanks to all of our audience. Great questions today. Mark, appreciate your, your perspective. We're going to move into a wrap-up with uh, two final items. And again, to all of our audience, uh, the PDF version of the presentation and the recording uh, will go out to each registrant. Okay, so item number one, uh, if you're interested in learning more about Lean and proven tools for continuous improvement, be sure to check out our Lean Boot Camp on September 30th here in Atlanta. Uh, Mark Preston's going to be leading a very practical, interactive Lean Boot Camp. Uh, he'll be tackling a wide variety of Lean principles and tools from, from value stream mapping to standard work to 5S, you name it. Uh, we'd encourage you to join us. So if you want more information, please contact me or check out uh, our website, and you'll get uh, the slide that's uh, there in front of you uh, as part of the, the deck after today's call. Finally, we've got a number of upcoming events uh, coming up in the next couple of months with lots of free webinars uh, featuring leaders across the manufacturing and supply chain world. So be sure to check out our upcoming webinars featuring Catavolt, ShowMe50.org, HD Supply, and Apex. So uh, please visit our website for more information and to register. And again, always feel free to reach out to me if there's anything we can do to serve as a resource for you and your organization. So, Mark, uh, before we conclude, any last thoughts? Uh, thank you very much. I hope it wasn't too noisy behind me, but I always enjoy sharing. I'm passionate about um, lean and the culture, and, and, and it's all about the people. So, um, do something special for your people without them thinking about it this week and, and really continue to make a difference by, by helping the people that work for you. So uh, anything that I can do, I'll be glad to. Um, you have on this deck is my email as well as Scott's email and uh, we're always looking for other, other companies to help and uh, if you need a fresh set of eyes just to walk through your plant we do that as well. So um, I enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great day today. Terrific. Great. Uh, thanks, Mark. And again, to our audience, thank you for joining us. Have a great afternoon, everybody.